Wow, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I came in from Florida. I always wanted to say I got to play Vegas. So I want to thank you for accommodating me. As he said, I have been a tech teacher for a lot of years. Um, starting way back in the DOS days and uh, back in the late 80s. So I've done a little bit of everything, but my favorite thing is teaching. I'm actually an accidental technologist. My degree was in English, and I learned that I could get math credit for taking programming. And I'd do anything to get out of calculus. <laughs> anything. So I started to program, and I loved it. But it really wasn't the programming that got me at the time. It was the power of the applications that were starting to come out, a la word processing, desktop publishing, et cetera. So I got involved in those, and I taught English for a few years, and then I became a tech teacher. And then I became a word developer, or excuse me, a HTML developer because I was a Unix administrator, and that's how we built help files. And when I found WordPress, I was back into the excitement of the applications, because I can now teach people without a bunch of HTML. Like the little guy said last, you can build without HTML and CSS. I think you need a little bit. But I can teach you a lot without that. And for what we're going to talk about today with online courses, we're not talking HTML and CSS at all. We're talking concepts, business, and plugins. So that's the buzz on online courses. Let's get started. Well, OK, here we go. The buzz is more than just hype. You're probably hearing internet marketers and people talk about online courses. And I apologize for you. I've had a little caffeine this morning and no sleep last <laughs> night, so I am a little on the shaky side. Um, I may have to grab a chair in a minute. Um, we've, we're staying at the Cosmopolitan, and uh, we're next to a nightclub. So I'm not doing real well today. So anyway, why build on the business case of building? We're going to talk about that, why to build, how to build from a content standpoint, and then how to build with WordPress. So why build on a business case? First of all, differentiation. You're hearing everybody talk about it. But it's still not everybody's doing it. So it may be a great way, if you're a business owner, to differentiate yourself from your competitors. So how many here are actually business owners, not business owners that are developing for other people? All right? And how many are developing for other people? So it might be a great way to help your businesses figure out, hey, we can differentiate you, too. Next, market research. When you build an online course, and especially when you wrap it around a membership website, which we're going to talk about doing, you build that community, that engagement like he was talking about. And it gives you that chance to reach offline and meet your customers, not just have an online experience with them. That's the power. And based on what you learn, yeah, that's right, what you learn from them in that course you're going to know what to build next, what they're going to buy from you, what they want to pay for. That's power. And then last, it was just so exciting being in that keynote this morning, it's about community and engagement and tribe building. We're all trying to build our tribes. Seth Godin's Tribes is one of my favorite books. This lets you do it. You know, how often do I want to give you an e uh, my email for an ebook anymore? I don't. But to get into a course where you actually engage with me, that I will do. So this is just a couple of things I had in a recent course where I let my students engage with me. Part of it was through a bulletin board, which we're going to look at, and part of it was just in the comments. Another benefit there, they help me build my content. Don't we all have enough content to build? I now have my students out there building their websites. These uh, were comments, by the way, from an intro course that I did in May and June. They're building the content. They're sharing their sites with each other. They're sharing questions and answers with each other. And that's building that community. How powerful is that? 
So that's your business case, how to build or why you want to build one, because that always needs to start. For those of us who are developers, sometimes we just want to do it because we can. But as business owners, we need to do it because there's a business reason. And that was our business reason. So now let's talk about the course itself, the courseware itself, how to build it to make it good, to make it get that engagement, to make people see it value. Because one thing, as it gets more powerful, we're going to have to move beyond perceived value. It's still new enough that just because you had the courseware, it's got more perceived value than an ebook. But the more people who do good courses, that's going to go away. So you're, the pressure's on. Let's do it right. And to do it right, it's all about some variety. Make some visual options. Audio with it. Sometimes it's all audio. I do have a few people who teach guided meditations. And that may be a lot more audio because they want you to close your eyes while you're doing it. But that fits for them. But for most of us, we want some video, we want some audio, and add a text element. You're going to see this a little later in here, too. This is not a YouTube channel. There needs to be some level of steps provided that people can refer back to. It doesn't have to be a full manual like I'm going to show, but it needs to be something. You know, think if you're doing a cooking show. We watch a cooking television show. Then if I go to my kitchen to try to make it, I want the steps written down. I do not want to be flipping back and forth on my DVR, figuring out, was that half a cup, quarter cup, et cetera. So do the same for your students. Educational instructors, educational theorists argue all the time on whether or not it's truly there is truly a different learning styles. You know, we used to hear some people are audio learners, some people are video learners, and there's a big argument about that. I don't care about the argument. What we do know on that is until people do it, they really don't learn it. So just do it. You get out there and build the course, but give them homework. Interact with them. Give them a chance to do it. Otherwise, it's really not much more than a PDF that just might go page by page. So, as we're, how do we do that? That's great. What do I do? So I give people some uh, ideas. Pick your topic. Set a goal. So in the course that I was talking about, my goal was that they would build their very first WordPress website. These were brand new students, side hustles that wanted to build a site. And they came to me and said, can we do this? I said, yep, let's do it. We're going to do it as a partial live, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and partial fully online automated. So we picked the topic. My goal was that. So everything in the content has to come back to that goal. Then you can do a brain dump. Just write out everything you know about it. Cool, th cool part with this, for those of you who are business people, you're probably going to end up with about four courses worth of stuff once you do the brain dump, right? And that's cool, because now it's not as much work once you get it done. And then once you get that brain dump done, let's flesh it out. All right, I've got everything out there. So my god, OK, gosh, they've got to they've build the course. They've got to install WordPress. They've got to know plugins and widgets and themes and the dashboard and users and comments and webmaster tools and just dumped it all out there. Of course, I, if I tried to present all of that, I would lose everybody immediately. They would never come back to me, and I would not be as recommended as I am among my students. So flesh it out, and as you do that, break it down. Now, I can't dance. I know that. But when it comes to moving through my text, I can break it down. One of the biggest complaints I get from people, and I guess because I teach online courses, I get calls from people all the time. I took this course, and I hated this. It's not broken down enough. It would be like if I had started with these folks and said, OK, everybody, log into WordPress and let's get started. These are people that are still asking me, what's the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org? Right? They think their site's hosted on WordPress.org. So we had to start with a domain name, buy a web host, log into and install. 
The biggest complaint, interestingly enough, I don't know if any of you are teaching in this field, the biggest complaint industry-wise that I get from that is people who are teaching social media. My students call me and they say, you know, I'm taking the social media class. And they're telling me that was the great stuff to do in Facebook. I have no idea how to actually do it. They just said, go do it. I don't know how to build a new page. I don't know how to add that content and schedule that. So let's do the same thing for our, if we're teaching technology. But even if you're teaching, if you're a life coach or a business coach or a marketing coach, whatever it is, make sure you're breaking it down to that low level that they need. Now, if you have prerequisites, that's okay too. Just let them be known, right? So when someone comes to me and takes my how to build an online course, and normally when we do this, it's a two-day workshop that we're now cramming into 40 minutes. Uh, when someone comes to me and we do that, I let them know you already have to have a WordPress site. We're not starting with WordPress.com versus WordPress.org that day. So it's okay to set a higher bar, just let your students know. And then make sure you're at their level. So that assumption, assumption of knowledge is one of the biggest mistakes. The next one is not engaging. I couldn't have been happier this morning with, this mor with that keynote. Because, right, it's about community and it's about offline engagement. The second biggest complaint I get is I just spent $10,000 on this woman's program and she went through all this stuff and we uh, gave her some homework and I spent a lot of time doing it and she never even looked at it. She said, oh, that's just for you. Well, that's just for me. I can do this on my own. I don't need your class, right? So engage. Now, the more you want to offer, I understand, maybe you can't have a daily touch point with everyone. But even if you had a once or twice touch point with them, it will make the biggest deal in the world for that engagement and that community. And in my experience, they will then be the ones doing those commenting and helping each other, and it brings them in. And pretty soon, we've got something rolling and a momentum. Again, I already clicked this. Make it more than a video. It's not a YouTube channel. You want a YouTube channel? Great. I have one. Do that. And then the last one is, but wait, there's more. This is not a benefit in an online course. It's not an infomercial. You will overwhelm them if you give them everything in your mind. So break it down. Do your brain dump. Flesh it out, and like I said, for every one of you who thinks you're going to teach one course, you probably have two to three in there, maybe four. And think of that as a good thing. You just created a new funnel. They come into one. So what we did, what did we do on our beginner course? We did install it. We turned off our search engine so that while we were playing around, we weren't sending weird things to Google. We learned widgets and theme, a very basic theme information. Posts, pages, users, comments, and now they can start their site and start playing with it. Then we had more advanced theme options for them to learn from. And then the next class we did Webmaster Tools and Yoast. And by the third one, these guys all had, well, they really had their sites live at the beginning, but by the third one, they are actually now working with other people who teach things like keyword research which is not my specialty. And they're learning the other tools and plugging that in, and they're building on it without getting overwhelmed. You know? I talked to a friend the other day about a course like this, and it wasn't even technical. She's been a sales rep for over 40 years, and she's awesome at it. She sells over a million dollars every year. She took a sales course from a very well-known sales trainer, paid a lot of money for it, and said, you know, I had to call him and, and change courses and get money back for parts because it was so much it was overwhelming. I'm thinking, if this woman, after 20 years of sales, is finding this overwhelming, what would a beginner salesperson do? Right. So, pardon me? Question? Okay. So once we've done that, let's identify those elements. We want video, maybe we want audio separate, we want some text, use quizzes, education alert here. Quizzes are not just for your students, quizzes are for you. 
If everyone fails the quiz, something's wrong with the way you're teaching, right? Or you're not asking questions properly, one or the other. But use those quizzes. Make them, use them, and, and make sure that your students don't feel frightened by them because sometimes people do get nervous on those. You can also use surveys and then, as I said, have them do it. Have them do the homework. You can integrate webinars. If you want that live, do some live webinars. First of all, an, an initial live webinar is a great sales tool. It lets you get people online, they see you, they, that no like and trust factor gets established. Two nights before I came here, I was on a webinar. By the end, I've plunked $197 on my card to take his course. Um, and starting it, it's a good course. So you can have quality, but you can use a webinar as a sales tool. You can also use them as you go along to kind of keep that interaction going. And it's a nice way to deliver content to a large group of people. 30 to 50 is what we usually have on ours, but there are famous people that have a lot more on theirs. And you can do evergreen webinars. I like to take a live webinar and put the replays into my class. There are webinar companies that will do what they call evergreen, where it looks like you're live. And I just don't really recommend that because we are really at a time in business where transparency is a big deal for people. And when it gets caught that, you know, somebody's Facebooking that you guys are at lunch and everybody thinks they're on a webinar with you, and we know, right? We all have these friends that Facebook every time you do something or tweet every time you do something, then it looks, it, it looks shady. So be transparent. If you're going to run an evergreen, just let people know. It's a replay. It's okay. You don't have to be live every time. And then just a couple options for live support, because I do recommend that you also pull in some live support, where it's one-on-one. -on -one. For me, I do a lot of Q&A through live support. If you want private, you can use things like Zoom.us or GoToMeeting. I happen to love Zoom.us. They're a smaller company, and, and I really find their... Um, product easy to use and very flexible and a lot less money than go to meeting. And then if you want to do some that are not private, you can always do Blab or Google Hangouts. All right. How many people are blabbing in here? Anybody? Blab. Okay. I am addicted. I'm going to admit that. If you want to find me at 9, 10 o'clock at night Eastern time, I'll probably be on there. Um, Blab is a new social network. It's in beta for those of you who don't know. It's similar to Google Hangouts. You can have four people on video sharing with each other and then comments scrolling down the side. So for me, it's a great way to get my students on together and talk and chat. Now, it's not private, so you wouldn't want it to, obviously, you can't shut it down to where it's only your paid for clients. So you use it as a sales tool. Right? I've got my clients there. Other people start popping in. They're like, this is really good stuff. And then you can share where this is coming from. Point them to your stuff. And it's really cool. Right in the sidebar, there's this little, tell a little bird. It integrates with Twitter very nicely. So anytime you're on there, it's like all of a sudden I get 40 new Twitter followers because people are tweeting that you're on and then people come and watch. And you, yeah, some of it people have nothing to say, but, and I really feel like there's this one guy who's really nice, but he's a gardener, and there's never any, anyone on with him. Sometimes you get into those, and they're like, oh, please, please don't leave. You're the only one here. <laughs> so if you want to do this with your students, the way I recommend it is make sure you've got at least like six students that will be on with you, and then as other people come and see the interaction, it's really good. You don't have to be that one person on there going, oh, God, please don't leave. It's just me. All right, so that's that. Now how do we do it in a WordPress sense? We've got the content down. We know what we're going to do with our course. What's our content? So let's select a plugin. Now my first three that I did were just a membership plugin. So all I did there was I had private content, right? Created a membership level that no one else could access. And I just created each page as a lesson. And then I had the little next on the bottom, and then a custom menu in the sidebar. And I had BB Press for bulletin boards and comments, so it worked. But what I didn't have was an easy way to do quizzes and surveys without going to some outside company and doing that. 
I had no achievement option. This may sound crazy, and it won't work for everyone, but adding points when people pass quizzes, when they log in, when they do things. I have a little dog and cat high-fiving, and it says, congratulations, you're starting with WordPress. People respond. It's this little bit of instant gratification, and it's especially true if you're teaching something that people are maybe a little intimidated by, right? I have 70-year-old women coming through. One of them is my mother. My how to teach, how to do WordPress class, and she's building her first website, okay? This is a woman we made give away her PC and buy a Mac so we wouldn't have to support her any longer. <laughs> and the guys at the Apple store all know her. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. But so, so make it, breaking it down for people that are a little intimidated, it just helps them, those little high five, it's a little point, you did this, good job, let's keep moving on. So I moved into courseware plugins. At the time that I started, there were really two available, WP Courseware and Learn Dash. So what I have today, that I, I'm going to show you just the outline of why I picked what, and then I'm actually going to show you some of WP Courseware. There is a brand new free one that came out. I've got a little note here. I've got to find that, and I will put it on the page that I have for all of you when I find it. It's freemium. It has just come out recently. However, most of the features I want are in the paid-for version. So it's going to take me a little time to dig into that one. But I've been digging extensively into WP Courseware, Learn Dash, and then Zippy Courses came out in December, and I dug into that. And then my favorite is combining membership and courseware. And part of that is because uh, WP Courseware requires something else for payment, and it's my favorite. But also because I can then pop them into an ongoing um, membership area if I want to, right? I start you with this course. You've already got your login. I can now put you into, if, if you are interested in a $29 a month ongoing training, then they can move right into it without having to stop, recreate something, et cetera. So that's part of the business side of why I like both. Co on the pricing, WP Courseware is 99 for two sites, 125 for 10, 175 for 25, not bad. Learn Dash is 99 unlimited. Zippy Course is pretty pricey, $199 per site. Can have multiple classes, but just per site. Uh, that one was getting a lot of play on social media. It's, it's created by Derek Halpern, who's a well-known internet marketer. So because of the social media and people asking me questions, that was where I put that one in. So just looking at the feature list, and I believe they have this for you. If they don't, I'm going to give you a link today to a online course site that I've created. And by tomorrow, you will have a downloadable guide. This is available. And, if, and those you can just have, no email. If you want to register for the site and go through a course yourself, you can do that also. And that's just for the people here at this, con at this conference. So the, you know, you've got to consider, do you want to accept payments with it? Do you need to integrate with the membership plugin? Uh, courseware, uh, WP Courseware and LearnDash do both of those. LearnDash and Zippy Courses take their own payments. However, what I have found is the ones who take the payments tend to be very limited. You have more power if you manage it through courseware anyway, uh, through membership anyway. So like LearnDash does PayPal and two checkup out, but not Stripe. And Stripe is very, very popular for people. So if you do it through the membership, if you're managing it through membership, then you can have the Stripe manage the payments and not have to depend on the other. Uh, Zippy Courses was completely out for me because it doesn't integrate with the membership plugin. Uh, email integrated, integration, LearnDash does if you use Zapier. If you're familiar with that, Zapier links apps together. And um, Zippy Courses does. So I would say for Zippy Courses, even though it's pricey, it really was built just for a very, very basic. It's quick. It, it, it manages everything. It accepts your payments. It lets you do the course. It lets you integrate your email. And that's it. You're not going to have bulletin board systems. You're not going to have membership systems. You're not going to have anything like that. It was just a very limited, although he does have the best student analytics and student reporting of any of them. So if you look at this list, you'll see that. LearnDash, on the other hand, is really built for universities, and it's great, but it has a bigger learning curve, which is really why I didn't go with it. I, I have to say now, 
they're making it easier from when I started. So I, you know, if, if you follow me, I may be changing my tune there in the next couple of months. Um, but they really work with like full out universities. So you can have multiple instructors all with their own grade book, their own area, and they're the only one that has that option available. Um, both WP Courseware and LearnDash do shopping cart. They support those achievements that I like. They all allow for quizzes. They all have some level of student reporting. And the only two, the WP Courseware and LearnDash are the only two, only if managed by a membership site, that also will let you build yourself an affiliate program if you need to. Uh, I tend to work a lot with coaches, it seems like, business coaches, life coaches, and they want me to come teach their people this. But then if they buy something from me, that person gets an affiliate. So I had to have affiliate tracking, and, I had, and so doing it through the membership site allowed that. Learning curve, ease of use, Zippy and WP Courseware, very easy, drag and drop. LearnDash is a little more complex, but they're working on that. WP Courseware is super supported with a lot of different things. If you look, so if you didn't want to do the membership site, you could handle it through WooCommerce, you could handle it through uh, easy digital downloads, and you can do like almost any membership. I lean towards either Paid Memberships Pro or MemberPress, and my selection on which one is based on one thing only. Do I need to sell just one membership to a customer or multiple memberships? So if I just want you to have silver, gold, and platinum, which means you might get more in each one, but you're only going to actually be enrolled in one at a time, PM Pro is my go-to. It's fast to set up. I love it. Member Press is a premium. Uh, however, they right away out of the box, you could buy the beginner class, this class, and the JavaScript class, but not these others. So it's very, you can buy very disparate products, more like a shopping cart, except being membership. You can do that in PM Pro, but you have to get a Git and add some code and make some changes. So if, we're develop, if, you're, a, if you're a developer, you can do it. If you're someone who's really looking for, I want to plug in to just handle this for me, then I would recommend the other. So let's go look at it. Um, you have one more decision you have to make here as we get into it, and that is to subdomain or not to subdomain. Do you want to put this on your main course, or on your main site, or do you want to set up a subdomain? I tend to set up subdomains. It lets you, you know, remember, you're going to be creating WordPress users here. I like to keep all of that segregated, and then my main site, my blog, et cetera, is on my main domain. But it's completely up to you. Once you do that, the process is this. We're building now. Configuring the basic site for the way I configure it is the following. I set subdomain. If you do it on your main domain, as we mentioned earlier, or somebody mentioned earlier, please back up first. But if I'm going to do it on a subdomain, I install WordPress. My membership plugin, which in the case I'm going to show you is Paid Memberships Pro. I install WP Courseware, the membership Courseware add-on, BB Press, the BB Press add-on for the membership site, the achievements. Theme My Login is the best plugin for adding a nice little widget, sidebar widget for a login so that they're not going to that slash WP admin page, and it looks like that. It has a nice little one right in the sidebar. And then for my manuals personally, I use the Google Docs Embedder. And that's completely up to you. It's a free plugin. So let's just go look at it. All right, we all recognize this. I'm in the dashboard. So I'm going to come over here into training courses and add a course. So you just add your title, any description, and you can set whether or not you want the uh, all units to be visual or they have to complete the one they're on to go to the next one. And depending on what kind of class you have, it, either one might make sense. So you have to just make that decision. I let all be visible. Under this, you can quickly set what type of user access you have, if you want them to see their quiz grades, if you want their, your email address, how it's going to be sent from you, if you want them to get a final summary when they're at the end, and then if you want a certificate to be sent. And one of the things I really like with this one is just all you can do is say, all you have to do is say yes, generate a certificate, 
and it will automatically generate one with the course name and information. And then if you want to add uh, some things to it, you can, but you don't have to hand configure it. So Learn Dash, for example, is a lot more powerful there. You can do a certificate for every quiz and all this, but you have to build each one. So if you're trying to get, for my people, we're usually trying to just get up and down, uh, out fast. This is what works for me. So that creates the course. <coughs> now, we're going to add a unit to the course. We're going to add a new unit. And I think any of us who've done posts and pages, this should be looking really familiar. You're thinking, oh, do we, do we really need to listen, learn this? My caps lock are on. So if you will um, just bear with me, I did a little quick file here. To show you how I edit. I pop in, oops. Don't oh, do that. Pop in my video. And then scrolling down here, you just see where it says require membership. It's as simple as setting that to require my membership. I can publish it. And then it looks, you know, depending on my theme. Ah. <laughs> I didn't set myself up as a student. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to come over to the one where I am a student that I had logged in to show you. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. So once I added all that, all I have to do is add it, view it. I've got it set up on a members page. This was just a page I created. I sent latest news to my customers. This was my cat who helped us that day uh, by crashing into my microphone and then knocking everything off my counter. And, uh, and then here you can see this is the course process, the progress, the green is everything that's been done. Getting down into the blues are things that haven't happened yet. If you want to click on one, you can look at it. You can see through your previous and your next units. Here's my video. This is from my Google Doc Embedder so that I've got a PDF embedded. You can just do HTML if you want. I just like to do the PDFs for people because they like to download them. There's still people who like to print. And, um, and they can download it here. You don't have to let them with the Docs Embedder if you don't want to. So let's go back to my page. Go to one that I haven't. These are my achievements you can see. They show on my page. These are the things. These are my points up here. And so if I come down to one where I didn't, so this is one where actually I had put the replays of the webinar. So we did a replay and it was just there. That one doesn't have a unit. But when they're done, they mark it as completed. Yes? What do you mean completed from? It's uh, called WP Achievements Lite. Uh, yeah, that was on the list, and I'll just show that to you. And, and I actually recommend the light works for WP Courseware. The pro version is out there on Code Canyon. I think it's like $15. It will also work with BB Press. So I do <laughs> when I teach, I try to show everyone as much of the free stuff as possible. So here I have gone in and then I just created these achievements and when they finish it, they get that little on the page, they get the points with it. You can set, you know, like 10 points for a quiz, et cetera. You can also, with the quizzes, I'll just show you while we're in here. I'm not sure how we're doing on time. Five. Five? Okay. I'll show you one thing on the quizzes and then take questions and we'll be done. So here when you add your quiz, you can set whether or not they have to answer certain amounts of questions, et cetera, before they're allowed to go on. So it's got functionality there. Once you go in and name your quiz and get started,
Now you can, you've got your option over here. So you can add multiple choice, true, false, open-ended, and then as you build a pool of questions, you can just click on the question from the pool and just pull it in. So if you want to keep doing it, like so maybe we've got three little quizzes that move up to a big review, you don't have to retype all that. You just pull it right in from the quiz pool. So what I found, as I, you saw, I, I looked through several. I like this one as far as I think the price is fair for a premium plugin. It works well. It's very easy to use in that once I had, once you've created your little course, you've created the modules, you can see them here. Here's the course. Here are the modules. If you want to change any of that, it's as easy as clicking here on modules, units, and quiz ordering and dragging these things around. And that is not true with most of them. It is like, what's lesson one going to be? What's lesson two going to be? That's great if you planned it all ahead of time. But sometimes, like maybe after one of those quizzes, I realized that is in the wrong order. And so it's as simple as just dragging that and moving it and saving those changes. So if you have questions about any of these after today, I mean, I'm going to ask for questions right here. But if afterwards you have questions, um, I'm giving you access to What's next is Are You Ready to Build? And for more information, if you go to howtobuildanonlinecourse.com forward slash WCLV, starting tomorrow, I will have these downloaded for you, as well as an option for you to log in and try taking the course yourself. And I'll have a bulletin board there. So if you have questions, please ask. And if based on that checklist, you think maybe you need one of the others, for example, you want to build the next Udemy, so you need multiple instructors, which means you need LearnDash. Any other questions about that, please email them to me, too, because I do still work in all of them. I'm happy to answer. So, Kim, we, uh, we have a microphone for your questions. We'll take about two or three questions. Great. Thank you. Um, I use it because I still think building your own email list is the most powerful thing you own, is your email list. And so when, they, when you have the email integration set up and they sign up for the membership, they get added to your MailChimp list, your AWeber list, or whatever. Right. So oh. if the middle one that you offered, the um, Learn Dash, that was the only one that had um, email integration. So if you have it for our membership site, do you also need it in our learning platform? You don't. Yeah. Yes. Now that's why I love the the integration of Courseware, WP Courseware, with the membership site. Is it gives me all those other options. It gives me email. It gives me affiliates if I need to. Easy digital downloads. Pretty much any integration you want is going to be part of a membership site. For most people, the content development, you know, writing it, putting it down. And if you're someone who's not a writer, I, mean, I started out as a writer, so the writing's easy for me. But if you're someone who's not and you're a talker, turn the little audio thing on here and go to town. All right? Then have it transcribed or run it. I even now, a lot of times, grab a screen grab, because I know I'm going to teach something on screen grab. And I start running through the screen grabs run that through drag and dictate, take the transcription, and, have, and, and build some of the text how-to just from there. But that, for most people, the content development's what's the hardest for them. Kim, we'll take the last one, and then okay. we'll just about two more questions right there. Great. Thank you. Just a quick question. Is there anything you have to do to integrate the Google Drive with the WP Courseware with your membership? Or do you just have to plug it in and make it? Because I think it's important to have that form or that I agree. And yes, the one thing you have to do is you add the BB Press add on for the membership plugin. That's the way I do it, and it just integrates beautifully. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.